Hello to the pessimistic, optimistic, and everyone in between. My name is Connor Phillippe, and welcome back to the Minnesotan Sports Podcast. And we have reached probably the most bittersweet weekend in all of sports, in my opinion, because as someone who loves football as much as I do, it's such an anticipated weekend. There's so much excitement. Everything is on the line. Winning team gets to hoist the Lombardi Trophy, and it's, it's a piece of history. But then the game ends and you're sitting there like, well, it's time to just enter the dark ages and we don't get to see football again for another five, six months. Is it seven? But at the very least, now there are all these leagues that are are popping up and the United Football League will be starting up in the spring and the Arena Football League is back. The Minnesota Myth are started up now. So there's a team, Arena Football team in Minnesota that'll be fun to watch. So there's, there's some excitement still in the football realm, but still is going to be tough to have this many months without football. But we don't have to think about that quite yet because we still have the Super Bowl to look forward to. And in this video, we're going to be going over the preview for what to expect for this game. Now, these two teams, obviously, if you're a football fan, this is deja vu. The Chiefs won a few years ago, four years ago, which is crazy to think that that happened that long ago. And what a difference four years can make because that year, I remember I was rooting so hard for the Chiefs in that game and I was so hyped when they finally won it because at that point, the Chiefs were going into that game, that Super Bowl, they hadn't won a Super Bowl in a long time. I think they hadn't won since Super Bowl four or five or something like that. And so I was really excited when they won that one and now I'm rooting so hard against them. Going back to the history of things, surprisingly, I understand that these two teams are playing on the opposite ends of the conferences, but it's still weird that these two teams have only played 15 times in their history. The Chiefs are just barely edging out the 49ers right now. They are 8-7 and seven in the overall series. So if the Chiefs are able to win the Super Bowl, then it's tied all time. Or no, that's not how math works. The, the Chiefs would be up 9-7 if they win. 49ers have a chance to tie up the overall series. All the, the history and the sl slate is all wiped clean as we head into this matchup here in Las Vegas. It should be a very good game, and we'll go into kind of the, the key factors here. First of all, the injuries. Honestly, both of these two teams are pretty healthy. They've got George Kittle, who on the injury report is technically questionable, but I mean, come on, he's going to play. It would take some crazy stuff to happen for George Kittle to not play in this game. That's just clearly... You know, you throw them on there just to be safe. On the Kansas City Chiefs side, they've got uh, Edwards Alaire and McKinnon, who are both questionable. Well, McKinnon's on the IR, so he's not playing. But Edwards Alaire is questionable. Rashi Rice, Joe Thune, who are all, you know, massive members of this team. Um, but for the most part, both of these two teams are pretty healthy. And, and that can often be the case going into the Super Bowl, not giving any excuses or, or, downplaying these two teams and their ability to get here and I'm also not giving any exclusive excuses to any teams that do have injuries and why they didn't make it besides the Vikings because they were screwed over in so many different ways going into the keys of the game here I have five major keys for what's going to be important in this game the first one Christian William McCaffrey I did not look up what his name his middle name is that just makes sense doesn't it Christian McCaffrey is going to be the factor. A running back must be really good at being a running back. If you are down by as much as the 49ers were and they leaned into the running game more, that should show you how impactful you are to a team. That's just insane. And McCaffrey took the game into his hands late in that one versus the Lions. He is the reason why they won that one. Obviously there was multiple other factors too. The Lions kind of gave up a couple possessions with the crazy going for it by Dan Campbell. And the, the Lions offense in general just didn't show up in the second half. The 49ers defense also has a lot to do with it. But McCaffrey is the key for the 49ers on offense. And I'll talk about some of the pressure that Brock Purdy could face later on here. But in order to counteract some of that pressure, McCaffrey and the run game is going to be the major factor here is, man... The Wolves are beating the Bucks eight by eight. I'm watching it on the side. I'm sure they'll give it up in the fourth quarter. If the Chiefs can shut down McCaffrey, I really think this game's in the bag. But that is one of the biggest ifs 
in sports right now is sh- if, if you can shut down McCaffrey because th- this season there's really been no such thing. Number two, can the 49ers defense actually get to Patrick Mahomes? This is a consistent theme. I mean, throughout the course of Mahomes' entire career, and especially in this playoff, and a lot of it had to do with the fact that these teams that Mahomes was playing up against, their their secondary was so just in shambles that Mahomes basically needed to get pressure in order for these teams to survive against him in, in these last couple weeks. And he did the exact opposite. You know, the pass rush tried to get to him. He was able to scramble away. He had all the time in the world to be able to get to a guy And when you combine that with the fact that some of these teams had no secondary, like the Bills, for example, then that's a combination for Mahomes to be able to to make things happen. And then they played the Ravens. Patrick Mahomes showed that he can do that against a healthy defense too. And so it's going to be a major thing. Can the 49ers actually get Mahomes under pressure? Let's be clear at this point, we know that Mahomes... It's not a, oh, can we mob Mahomes? Can we make him uncomfortable in the pocket and and terrorize him all game long? Unless the offensive line is as bad as it was versus the Bucs a few years ago, that's the only situation where Mahomes is going to be taken down as much as that. As good as this 49ers defensive line is, they know that it's only going to be, can we slow Mahomes down, not can we stop him? Number three, Chris Jones versus Brock Purdy. It's Chris Jones versus the offensive line, but... It's, it's really Purdy's ability to scramble, his ability to you know make things happen when things don't go his way. Now, a lot of people talk about how Brock Purdy is only a game manager. That's not necessarily true, but it also is true that he is not nearly as gifted as some other quarterbacks when it comes to when the play breaks down and you are forced to get it to a guy. What are you going to do? Because Purdy has been gifted with the ability to, you know, there are guys that always seem to be open in his offense. You either check it down to McCaffrey or you throw it to a wide open Kittle or Debo Samuel. And when none of that is available and the Chiefs defense and specifically Chris Jones is bearing down on you, what is Purdy going to do? And we've seen games this season where he has definitely been prone to turnovers in those situations. And so... Chris Jones could make his money in this final game of potentially of his career with the Chiefs and he could eventually go to another team in free agency. Purdy is going to have to find a way. Either this 49ers ers team is going to have to play call really well and get guys open constantly or Purdy is going to have to prove that in the biggest game under the biggest lights that he has the ability to go off script and make things happen himself. The fourth out of five key factor can anybody cover Travis Kelsey? Travis Kelsey, you know, I all respect to him, and I'm not saying that this means he's not a good tight end, but it is true that Kelsey has had probably one of the easiest postseasons that he personally has had in his career. Usually he is being double teamed, and usually he there is a, a play calling against him where he has no ability to get to the ball. He still does find ways to get to the ball in those instances, but he was at least slowed down in some degree with those play calls. And now, so far this postseason, he has gotten himself into situations where he can just be wide open. And again, the Ravens game was kind of the outlier in that. And the defense really was what's shown for the Chiefs in that game. But in the other two games that they played this postseason against the Dolphins and the Bills, Kelsey was wide open. He had really no secondary that was able to cover him. And so it's going to be a factor here. He's going to have to go against a really good secondary in this game. And obviously it's going to come down to can the defensive line get to Mahomes, which I talked about, but also can Kelsey find ways to get open against a much better secondary? I think he's going to be able to, but it's just a matter of will he be really good in this game or will he be dominant because a dominant Mahomes and Kelsey will win the game for the Chiefs the fifth one is interesting because for me it's who will get the ball first as much as it is who will get the ball last for me personally I feel like if the 49ers can get the ball first get the ball rolling and get out to a lead that is going to be the 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 way to a victory for the 49ers 
I feel very confident that the 49ers can get up to a... I understand that they lost the last Super Bowl they played in by getting up to a 10-point lead and then with seven minutes left, giving it up. But this year, I think it's different. I feel like if they can get up to a 10 or more point lead in this game, I feel like they won't relinquish it the entire time. And that might come back to bite me because Shanahan has been known for that in the past. But in this game, I feel like if the 49ers get it first, get out to a good lead, they'll win. If the Chiefs are gonna are able to either get the ball first or stop the 49ers on that first drive, they'll be able to keep it close enough where I, I feel like they'll end up sticking it out and winning in the end. But I think that's gonna be a major factor there. Final predictions. I am going to say that this 49ers running game, the defensive line that they're able to have, and honestly, I feel like George Kittle is going to remake a name for himself in this game. Obviously, he's known as one of the best tight ends, but I feel like people kind of stopped talking about him as elite as much as they have been in the past this season. I feel like Kittle is going to be the name that we will remember in this game. I really do think so. I think that this Chiefs defensive line is going to force Purdy to get the ball out quickly. That's where Kittle's going to shine, and I honestly feel like he's going to use his yards after catch in major ways in this game. Altogether, I feel like that with the 49ers running game, being able to lock it down, McCaffrey will have a big game. I say the 49ers win Super Bowl 58, and it's going to be a 31-27 to score. I think the 49ers will be up by two possessions late in the game. The Chiefs will get it down to, to four points, but in the end, they will not quite be able to overcome it. This really could go either way, and that's why, you know, as much as I hate to say that this Super Bowl will be a really good one, it, I think it will be, because I think these are two teams where you I don't think we'll ever see a, a, a lead of more than two possessions in this game. I think it's going to be close all the way through. I think that, the, that McCaffrey's going to start out strong, and it's going to be just a back and forth. Mahomes is going to be able to, to keep this one close. But my final prediction is that the 49ers will win it by four. Let me know in the comments what you think. It's been a great season of predictions. I'll be doing a raw reaction after the game. And then stay tuned in the next few weeks because I'm going to be going over AFC and NFC and going over every single team and kind of breaking down their season and kind of doing a really early prediction of the offseason. And then, I mean, honestly, offseason comes up quick. It's, it's early to mid-March where free agency is going to start. I'm going to talk all about the Vikings because there is a lot to talk about with the Vikings this season in the offseason. There's a lot that they could potentially do and their future could completely shift based on those decisions. So I'm so excited to talk about that stuff. But for now, enjoy the Super Bowl. I'll be talking about it after the fact. Enjoy it with whoever you enjoy it with. And I'll see you on the flip side.